So we've made it to the west coast of Australia. This is our first view of the uh, Indian Ocean. And this is uh, Surface Point, where they have the Margaret River Pro-Am comps. And the surf looks uh, pretty big here. Beautiful day. We're just uh, into a, a raptor wildlife sanctuary. Wow, look at the waves crashing over there. I wonder they have the surfing comp here, this is the biggest surf we've seen since we left New South Wales, I think. Wow, look at those. Gosh, look how big it is. Yeah, I can see. <laughs> Bye -bye. So we've driven down to Cape Lewin uh, today. Uh, this is the most southerly point in WA and it's where the uh, Indian and Southern Oceans meet. Here we have the uh, Cape Lewin Lighthouse, tallest lighthouse in Australia. Let's go check it out. So a bit of a correction, this is not the tallest lighthouse in Australia, it's the tallest in uh, WA. It's the t third tallest at 56 metres in Australia. Not sure which is the tallest, but we've got a tour booked at 10.30. So we'll uh, take up the lighthouse for a look. So here we are at the junction of the southern and Indian Oceans. This is the grandfather clock weight used to turn the uh, light up the top. You had to wind it up every two hours. 100, 100 winds. Take 10 minutes to wind that all the way to the top to keep the uh, language. 10 minutes winding up, then slowly dropping for two hours, the channel weight turning the gears, which turned the lenses. However, if you wound the weight, the lenses kept turning because it had a counterweight dropping from the top. Main weight, counterweight. But see the motors, they're not big. The lens system above weighs three and a half ton. It's floating on just over 12 litres of mercury. So below the base, some countries call it quicksilver. So that's floating. Like a boat sits on water, it's floating without friction. As I stop, you can get two hands, give it a push, and it will do a lot of turns. The lenses are valued in the millions of dollars. It's all handmade glass, lead crystal, gunmetal frame. Their job is to magnify light. In the center, little LED with red wires going into it. Tiny light comes on in the dark, gets magnified, and you see it 45 kilometers. So they're a giant magnifying lens. And that's why they're turning today, because if we stop them, the sun will come back in, create a lot of heat, and it could do damage. You know like screen savers used to bounce around so the screen of a computer wouldn't burn? Yeah. That's why you turn lenses so you don't get hot spots. And the brass fence, you'd open them at night so you air to breathe, oxygen for the flame, and the upright pushed the fumes through the top, so it's like a chimney. Now speaking of uh, fresh air, I like this door. Around to the right, around the wind, hang on the hats and your arms. Ah, this side, that side, it's a bad one. Just watch it in there, mate. Right. Yeah, it is, it's lovely now. So we've left Margaret River and we're dropping in at Bustleton. Check out this pier. Would you say the longest pier in the southern hemisphere? Yeah. Do we know how long it is? Not yet. Beautiful day here in Vasselton, no wind. Nice and sunny. Let's go for a walk on the pier. Yeah. So walking along the pier and um, four dollars to walk along the pier. What a surprise. Anyway, it goes towards maintenance, it's a huge pier. I suppose it costs a lot to maintain. Anyway, looks like a long walk. Well we're still going. <laughs> a long way. What, are, what do you reckon? Is it two oh, kilometres or something? About two k's, yeah. This will be our steps in for the day. Here we are at the end of the jetty, 1.841 kilometres out. Only 3,328 to Sydney. Just in uh, the Shelter um, Brewery restaurant, having some lunch near the Bustleton yeah. Pier. Um, 
jetty. Jetty, they call it, don't they? Yeah. They do all that. Bustleton Jetty, I think they call it. Yeah. So, do all their own beers here, trying their pale ale. Yeah, yeah. cool looking spot. Here we are in Bunbury, and we're at the uh, Bunbury Marlston lookout at the moment. So looking over the Subaru D at Bunbury there. Check out this cool sculpture. Found another flying fox. Here we go, ready, set, go. <laughs> <laughs> hey! <laughs> We're here at the uh, Crab Fest in Mandurah. Hey everyone, uh, we're in Perth at the moment and we've just driven up to the Perth Hills to the uh, Araluan Botanical Gardens. Mm -hmm. Had some lunch up, lunch up here and just wandering around having a look at the gardens. This is the Grove of the Forgotten, a war memorial here in the Araluan Botanical Garden. Nice waterfall. Lake of Reflection. So this was built uh, after the First World War and I think this was a pool in the, in the day. We're in Kings Park in Perth uh, this morning and check out this uh, this spot here Lyco Potter Island and that look cool huge park here right in the center of town the water looks unusually green as if it's almost got some sort of Dying it for some reason. Stop our gear there. Not sure. Check out this flower. Go to the lookout. Well, we landed in Cervantes yesterday, which is about a couple of hundred k's north of Perth. Um, and this morning, we're going on the Pinnacles Desert Drive, which is uh, not far south of uh, Cervantes. And um, yeah, let's go and see what it's about. But uh, a whole lot of limestone pillars in the desert here somewhere. Let's go and have a look. Look at this. One of the limestone pillars in amongst the yellow sands.
desert view over the pinnacles. A 360 degree view from a high point here. It's, uh, it's about a 5k loop track. You drive around the pinnacles. Also, there's a walking track, but yeah, it's quite unusual. It's very yellow sand there, but you see off in the distance. Beyond all the pinnacles, it's uh, back to the white sands. Lake Thetis now, and this is uh, home to a stromatolite community, which is uh, microbial bacteria that grows in this uh, very salty lake and forms these uh, dome-like structures that you can see here, some of which are 3,500 years old. The stromatolites are uh, the oldest living organisms on the planet, and um, Western Australia is famous for them. The oldest ones, I think, by reading that, are up in the Pilbara, which we might get to see later on, but amazing. These microbial mounds have been growing for three and a half thousand years. We're at Sandy Cape at the moment. Um, beach camp, about 250 k's north of Perth. Just going to check out whether uh, we can see a sunset. Have you been up on the hill up there? there must be some sort of lookout or something here. Oh, the light looks nice here now, doesn't it? Yeah. There's people, there's kids up there, isn't it? Say hello, Ron and Karen. Hello! <laughs> We've just come for a bit of a walk up to the Sandy Cape uh, lookout this morning. The breeze is a bit more on the shore, so the, uh, the bay doesn't look as nice as it did yesterday. But yeah, under a uh, little repair construction, this boardwalk, I think. Not too windy. Which is nice. We're a bit sick of the wind. So this is uh, sunrise at Sandy Cape. There's the sun coming up. It's still got a nice view. The moon setting over the point over there. That's really cool. We're at uh, Milligan Island just for a, a day trip today, and uh, a little spot here called Window Rock. Look at that! There's a window on the rock. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> we are at Lucy's Beach near Greenough, just south of Geraldton, and uh, all because of Lucy, we've come here, haven't we? Wow, and look at this uh, rock formations along the coast here. A little bit of a window in this one. Watch as the waves crash through this. Here's Lucy at Lucy's Beach. <laughs> so we're at Ellendale Pool. This is uh, just inland from green up about 25 k's so it's a spring water fed one kilometer long pool permanently got water in it um supposedly warm but didn't feel that warm a bit worryingly there is a risk sign here saying swim at your own risk when the water's above 24 degrees, there's a risk of amoebic meningitis, 
which um, can be fatal. So plenty of people swimming there. But it doesn't feel like the water's over 24 degrees at the moment. But I think I'll just watch. Don't think I'll swim. More uh, wind turbines. We're actually close enough to hear this one turning. It does make a little bit of a roar. We'll get up closer. So uh, why do they build the wind farm here? It's one of the windiest places in Australia. Wind speed in this area average 20 to 25k as a result of a strong seasonal sea breeze. Don't know whether the camera is picking it up, but yeah, you can certainly hear it ripping through the air. So I mentioned before, back at the windmills at uh, Geraldton Round, this Midwest area is the windiest place in Australia. And uh, a lot of the trees reflect that. They all lean away from the, uh, the coast. And we'll show you one now. Check out this example of that wind affected leaning tree. That's crazy. <laughs> so this is the uh, entry to uh, Hill River Farm, where we're staying for five nights, six nights. Get through the Easter period. But you can see these trees on the right hand side. Again, an indication of how windy it is in Geraldton. They all grow leaning away from the wind. 